I'm Max Kaiser. This is the Kaiser Report. Well, the crypto market is expanding, 100 billion and growing, growing by leaps and bounds. As we've been talking about for years now, there's a lot going on here and it's mutating and morphing and things are happening. The buzzword of the week, buzzword of the month is ICO, initial coin offering. <gasps> Stacy. Max, we're going to talk about initial coin offerings, but first I want to establish that this market started with Bitcoin. Kaiser Report was the first international television show to cover it by three years. We were three years ahead of CNBC. We covered that when it was like $2 a Bitcoin, then it went up to 3000 over the course of the next six years, uh, seven years. Then we had Ethereum come on the market, and a lot of people are talking about a thing called the flippening. Tell us what the flippening is. The flippening is when the market capitalization of Ethereum exceeds that of Bitcoin. And so it's flipping. They're flipping the, the, the places on the market capitalization chart. So that would be the first time, if it happens, that Bitcoin is not the dominant. Yes, and more and more of the trade volume is going to Ethereum. Now, Ethereum is not, it's very dissimilar, it's not that similar to Bitcoin. It achieves a different thing. We'll go into that in another episode. But Ethereum is a, on that blockchain of Ethereum is this ICO market. So the initial coin offerings are happening on the Ethereum blockchain, which is causing the price of Ether to soar so much, which is causing people to buy Ethereum in order to participate in these ICOs. It's become a big market. So I'm going to look at this Reuters headline here to kind of start to go in a little bit to this uh, becoming kind of controversial because big names like Barry Silbert, uh, Roy Sabag in the gold market, they're all like saying this is crazy South Sea bubble, tulip bubble sort of insanity going on in the ICO market. Initial coin offerings, present dangers to investors, new challenge for U.S. regulators. Now, to name a few of them, we have Bancor just in the last week or two, and that's with Tim Draper is heading that. We had Brock Pierce. He went through the official. He's of the ICOs. He's the only one I know that intentionally made sure to get to abide by uh, SEC, Securities and Exchange uh, Commission regulations. Um, then we've had the, um, the basic attention token. And just to show you what the basic attention token was, this is what their um, prospectus is, essentially, online. The basic attention token improves the efficiency of digital advertising by creating a new unit of exchange between publishers, advertisers, and users. It all happens on the Ethereum blockchain. The value of the token is based on user attention, which simply means a person's focused mental engagement. So people were pouring into this. It raised a lot of money very fast, only to be then superseded by the bank war, which came afterward, which raised $150 million in three hours. So these are the sort of, you know, products being offered to the market and investors are pouring in. Well, the potential for these coins, if you combine it with artificial intelligence, when you combine it, combine it with 3D printing, you combine it with social media, as a combined with browsing, as the attention token does, you get paid to browse effectively using the frictionless economy of cryptocurrencies to make that all happen. Uh, when you combine it with uh, a lack of trust in the physical world and a crumbling ecosystem and more virtual reality, it's a 21st century disembarkation from the physical plane of existence into a virtual plane, and the virtual plane uses cryptocurrencies where thoughts become money, what I call the psychic equity conversion, the PEC. I've actually written about this for 25 years, you know, going way back to my days on Wall Street when they started to create derivative products based on ideas that were derived from securities but not actually securities. You know, and that was the launching pad for so much creativity on Wall Street. And now we've got cryptocurrencies and now we've got initial coin offerings. And there are a proliferation of these ICOs, these initial coin offerings. The SEC is not on the radar whatsoever. They're starting to now look at it and try to figure out what the heck is going on here. Uh, they are um, unsure what to do. Um, and meanwhile, the forces that shape laws in Washington, the lobbyists, they're now being funded by 
crypto billionaires and crypto multimillionaires. So the ability to reshape laws and to reshape the SEC in the image of crypto is upon us. It's possible, but um, the, I will go into that. The article does mention that calling yourself ICO, which sounds very similar to IPO, which the SEC regulates, that's their market. And if you stomp on their ground, just like if you, if you issue a gold coin that looks like a U.S. dollar, the Liberty coin, those people get arrested. Charlie Schramm, a friend of ours, he was arrested, did two years in prison for exchanging, uh, operating as a money exchange uh, via Bitcoin. So they, they could just pounce. They could arrest you when you arrive at JFK. Right now we don't know what's going on, but they, we do know they're looking at it. Um, in terms of the investors, the people piling in on these tokens, right now they're all happy because the price everybody's making money. These things are doubling, and tripling in value in like the course of hours. But um, the tokens do not in themselves confer ownership of a stake in the business. And that's one of the ways that these the people offering these coins say, well, we're not offering an ownership stake, therefore it's not a security. This is what one of their arguments is. And this is what... <laughs>